Hey, hey, Ronnie, you got that on the Rick fix up there? Okay, thank you, brother. Praise God. Y'all help me sing. Oh, yeah. Somebody need to fix the camera. <laughs> I done been told twice that I ain't got no head up there. <laughs> oh, oh, you gonna accept a, what, come up here and help us sing, girl. Yeah. Come on up here. I think I think y'all know some of these songs. I just feel sure you will. Excuse me. Now listen. Some of these songs we singing, you got the power. Amen. Because listen, we just saying great and mighty is the Lord our God. Amen. He is great. Hallelujah. Greater than all. <laughs> I like that, don't you? 
I like what Donnie said Sunday morning. He never lost a battle either, by the way. And he never will. Hallelujah. And here's one he gave us a little power at too, y'all. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, to be up your weapons and flee. For the Lord has given me authority to stomp all over thee. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, to be up your grab a hold of that. God has paid the price and given you and I the power to do it. And we got to do it. Amen. I tell you, sometimes you just got to do it. Now, praise the Lord. Amen. Oh yeah, I, I feel it. Amen. Praise God. Let me tell you something. We're just enjoying the Lord here tonight. John Hagen, I was reading a book or, uh, about him, and uh, uh, John Hagen, the one that's dead. Kenneth Hagen. Kenneth, Kenneth Hagen. Hagen. And said he was talking to the Lord, okay? Him and the Lord had a conversation going on, and in between them was this old uh, demon, slimy old monkey. <coughs> and, 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 and Kenneth said, listen, Lord, said, tell that thing to get out of here so we can talk. And Lord said, I, I'm not going to do that. I give you all the power to do that. You tell him to get out of here. Amen. So we got to, he give us the power. So we got to use that power, ain't we? Amen. Just tell him to get out of here. Let's tell him to get out of here. Amen. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, to pick up your weapons and flee. The Lord has given me authority to stomp all over thee. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, to be up your weapons and flee. For oh, the Lord has given me authority. used to sing it this way. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, to take up your weapons and fleas. <laughs> Please. <laughs> uh -huh. Her little granddaughter, Kelly. Huh? He probably has got fleas. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Now, now, we talked about uh, great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is he, amen? Amen. And we've talked about uh, and we sang about, uh, you know, I was reading this morning in Psalms where David was singing songs with joy to the Lord, and we're supposed to do that. By the way, he was doing it with a harp, a string instrument, by the way, guys. And listen to this. We talked about great and mighty is the Lord our God, and we talked about God giving us power to command Satan to get out of here. 
So let's look, let's fi figure this one out. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rages, we will not be Guess what? I feel the rain. I feel the rain. It's a falling down on me. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. And it's a falling down on me. It's a former rain, the latter rain together. I'm not singing about the weather. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. Feel the rain. I feel the rain. And it's a falling down on me. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. And it's a falling down on me. It's a warm rain, the latter rain together. I'm not singing about the weather. The Holy Ghost rain. Falling down on me. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. And it's falling down on me. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. And it's falling down on me. It's the former rain, the latter rain together. The Holy Ghost rain is falling down on me. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. Feel the rain. I feel the rain. 
it's a falling down on me. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. And it's a falling down on me. It's a former rain, the latter rain together. I'm not singing about the weather. The Holy Ghost rain is a falling Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus in this place. I got to sing it. This is it. Turning 
you tonight and we worship you God and God we have decided to follow you Lord yes. we love you tonight and we praise you we worship you tonight Father we worship you in Jesus name and everybody say it Amen. hallelujah thank you Lord Praise the Lord. Let me get wired up here. We'll be ready to go. Praise God. I get to continue tonight on what the Lord had me ministering on Sunday morning and last Sunday morning, and I believe the Sunday morning before that. God just uh, hadn't let me uh, turn loose of it yet, but uh, and I'm enjoying it. I hope you all are uh, talking about the purpose of our Lord coming to Second Advent. But we're going to be talking about some more of it tonight. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Get this thing undone here. Y'all bear with me here. Got all, I've got all kind of wires I'm wired up here. Got to put some on and take some off. <laughs> We're getting close. Look out. Look out. <laughs> I like this thing right here, Sandra. Hands free. I like it, boy. I tell you right now. Check one, two. One, two. Turn this thing off. Come on. Check one, two. Praise the Lord. Can you hear me now? If you got your Bible and you want to follow with me, uh, I'm excited what the Lord has for us tonight. Uh, I, uh, I get to finish what I started Sunday, and uh, we got one, look like we might have one more round after that, but the, the Lord has had me ministering on uh, the second advent. That means God, our Lord Jesus, arrival back to this earth, and he's coming back just like he said he would, amen, and uh, so I'm excited about uh that and and uh, it's nice to to get in God's word and study God's word and see some of the things He tells us about His coming, what to look for, and uh, so we just uh, won't be taken by surprise if you got the Lord in your heart and you're studying His word and everything. You'll see some of these things we're going to look at here tonight, and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, 
do some more about the purpose of the second advent. We talked about uh, earlier the manner of his coming and uh, we uh, looked at a lot of stuff there and God wanted me to continue on the purpose of his coming. We talked about uh, some of the things there and uh, I'm not going to get into a lot of those. Uh, we already talked about it. <laughs> but I'm going to talk about what he has for us tonight. We'll look at it in his precious word and it's going to be talk about, uh, we're going to talk about the manis manifestation of his glory, praise God, upon this earth. It's fixing to happen. I'm excited about it. And uh, we all can be excited about it because guess what? We're going to be with the Lord. When he comes, we're going to be with him. And we're going to be with him in the millennium reign. We're going to be with him for eternity, praise God. And uh, we're going to help him rule and reign this earth uh, for uh, eternity, amen? So I'm excited about that. So we got a lot of responsibility on our hands coming up here too, amen? <laughs> so let's look and see. Yeah, Ronnie, you have to forgive me, brother, because I'm going to be pouncing around up here. <laughs> Praise God. Look here. He's got it fixed up uh, real good here. Purpose of the second advent, part four we're going into. And uh, there's going to be some stuff. We, we cover some stuff Sunday. God wanted me to cover about uh, the battle of Armageddon, what was going to happen during that day that uh, we was going to be victorious, by the way. Uh, uh, and, and so... We're going to get back in here to some of the other stuff God wants us to look at here uh, tonight. We're going to talk about uh, the first thing we're talking about here. Now, is the manifestation of God's glory on this earth. In Isaiah, we're going to look at it and see. Isaiah 4, 2, 6, we're going to read here in just a minute. And just see about it. Think about it. God uh, uh, created the heavens and the earth, and he had a special plan for, for this earth. And, and man messed it up. And, and well, at first, uh, he let Satan come down here and rule and reign. And he really messed it up. And so uh, God had to do something else. So he created man in their own image, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. He created man. And he told man, he told man and woman, not just man, by the way, I'm blessing you, both of you. Go out there and do this. This is what I want you to do. I got a plan. I want you to do it. Well, guess what? In the, in the dispensation of innocence, man messed up, woman messed up, and it caused a curse to come up on this earth. It, can you imagine, to think about it, this earth is cursed. It's got a curse on it just like man and beast and everybody's got the curse because of what? Sin entered back into the world. Well, God had a plan and had a way, praise God, and he took his son Jesus who paid the price for you and I uh, to buy back, legally get back uh, the possession of the earth the way it should be uh, taken back legally. And his son, Jesus, died on the cross. He was innocent blood. And uh, praise God, he did uh, all of that for you and I. And the rapture will take place. And we're not talking about the rapture, though. We'll be in the rapture. We're talking about the second advent here tonight, the purpose of our Lord Jesus Christ, his arrival back to the earth. He actually puts his feet back down upon his earth. Can you imagine? Think about it. <clears throat> Jesus Christ came as a babe, and he was raised up on his earth that he created, his land, by the way. His earth is his. And he was raised up, and he was God with us. He was deity with us, and his that was created rejected him. So they, they rejected him and killed the, the creator. But he's God. He had a plan. And praise God, on that Thursday, you and I, because of the hope we have, he came out of that grave and he sits at the right hand of the Father interceding for you and I. Amen? Well, he tells us in his precious word that he's coming back again, the second advent, to actually set his feet back down here on this earth. But you know, when the first time he come, he come what? As a lamb. He was crucified. He didn't, uh, uh, he didn't resist. He just came as an innocent lamb shed his precious blood innocently for you and I. He did that for you and I. He even died for the sinner that hated him. He died for him too. Now we read and study in, in the history and stuff like that where men and women die for somebody they love or something, you know. That's an awesome thing. But think about our Lord. He died for somebody that hated him and despised him. Can you imagine? I can't imagine. I can't imagine that agape love. You see what I mean? 
So we're talking about his purpose coming back, some of the things that are going to happen on this earth when he does come back, with vengeance, by the way. But we're going to rule and reign with him. Let's look at Isaiah. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious. You see, his glory is going to shine here upon this earth. It's going to be really bright. It's going to be brighter than the sun and the moon and the stars. It's going to put them to shame because of his great glory. Amen? Look at here. <coughs> His glorious and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and, and, and commonly for them that are escaped of Israel. Now, I want to tell you, his glory is going to be down here, and guess what's going to happen? He's going to bring uh, the curse is going to be gone of the earth. And what will happen when the curse is gone from the earth? The earth is, is going to bring forth good fruit. Isn't that going to be exciting? Just like we, when we become a Christian, we start bringing forth good fruit because of the help of our Lord. Amen? Now let's look a little bit further right here. <clears throat> and it shall come to pass that he that's left in Zion, he that remaineth in Jerusalem, shall be called holy. Even everyone that is written among the living in Jerusalem. We're going to be a holy people. Now I'm going to tell you, we're going to go through some uh, more things that's going to happen uh, because of his purpose down here about uh, the religion of the universe and everything. That's going to be looked at a little bit tonight too. But look here. Let's go a little bit further right here. And uh, let's look at four. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. Now, you know, the Lord, when he comes, he's going to get rid of all rebellion. All rebellion on this earth, mankind, through the millennium reign. And by the way, through the millennium reign, God has given man one more probation period to try to make it right. One more time. You know, he's a merciful God, isn't he? He gives the opportunities there. He's going to give mankind, uh, his creation, one more time to make it right. And guess what? During that thousand-year millennium reign, there's going to be some that's going to rebel against God and they're not going to want to obey the Lord Jesus and us saints and the things. And that's when the devil's loosed out of the pit at the end of the millennium reign. He's loosed out of the pit for a season and all those people will come and try to take over Jerusalem again. I'm here to tell you. Boy, the devil and all of his people that follows him, they know our Lord's going to rule and reign the universe from where? The third heaven? Uh-uh. Down here on this earth, the heaven up there and Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem is going to come down and dwell upon this earth for eternity. And guess who's going to be in it? God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Ghost. We're going to see them. <clears throat> Can you imagine? I'm excited about that, ain't you? How you doing today, Lord? Love you. Praise God. I'm glad you love me. <laughs> thank you for loving me, Lord. Oh, God, thank you for loving me. I wasn't worth it, but your mercy and grace, hallelujah. Unmerited favor, God, thank you so much. Amen? Hallelujah. Look at here. Go a little bit further. <clears throat> and he's going to cleanse all of that. He's going to make judgment upon those rebels and everything, a true judgment, and destroy them and get rid of them, by the way. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place a Mount Zion and upon his uh, her assemblies, a cloud and a smoke by day and the shining of a flame fire by night for upon all the glory shall be a defense. God's glory is going to shine down here, y'all. It's going to shine. See, the curse is going to be gone. God's going to be here. Everything's going to be right the way he intended it in the first place. But he gave man what? Free will, didn't he? Free will. Think about it. Let's look right here. And there shall be a tabernacle for shadow in the daytime for the, for the heat and, a, and for a place of refuge for a convert from storm and from rain. Let's go to Matthew 16. He's going to remove, think about it. Well, let's go to Matthew 16, 27 and read that. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of of his father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Now, his glory is going to shine and be manifested down here. Amen. And we're going to see that. Hallelujah. I'm excited about that. Now, let's look 
and see what he's going to do when he comes. He's going to remove the curse from the earth. Let's look at Revelation 22, 3 and, and talk about that. And there shall be no more curse. There it is right there. You see, man has to live by the sweat of his brow because of what he did. And woman has to go in travail giving birth because of things that we did. That's what goes on. Well, guess what? That curse is going to be lifted. And guess what? The curse on this earth is going to be lifted. And it's going to prosper and be fruitful the way God wants it to be. Can you imagine? Praise God. Hallelujah. Look here. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servant shall serve him. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's going to be an honor to what? Serve him. Now let's look right here uh, in Revelations, talking about this curse, 21, 1 through 7. We've read this before, but I like to remind, uh, we need to remind each other some of these things. Look at here. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. Now I want to tell you, I don't know what's going to happen, all of that, but I know the earth is going to remain for eternity, but God's going to do some things. It's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. He's going to do some remodeling. You know what I'm saying? He's going to do some remodeling and get it fixed up the way it's supposed to be. Can you imagine what it's going to be like? I'm excited about that. And it says right there, you know, I saw uh, a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. There was no more sea. Now, I don't know what's going to happen to the sea, but l let me give you a little example right here. <clears throat> One time I had a, a vision. I guess it was a vision. I seen the, uh, the Lord had me out working. I didn't see the Lord, but I was working for him, and I know it. And I was on this earth, I guess, or in heaven. But I thought it was in heaven, but I, I believe now it was on this earth, the new heaven and the new earth, okay, the new earth. And God gave me this vision, and I was, and, and, and I don't mean this wrong. <laughs> I'm like Joseph there, you know. I was, I was like a king or something. And I was going to this foreign land over there to check out the people and make sure they were working and doing the things they were supposed to be doing. Of course, my king was God and, and my Lord. But I was going over there to check that out, okay? I was, I was doing a job that God called me to do, and I was doing it, and I was going to check it out. And on the way over there, man, I seen, there was no, I don't remember no oceans or nothing like that, but it was a pretty good ways over. I don't know if it's just a flash. I went over there, but I went, and there was brooks and streams and little beautiful, clear crystal rivers and everywhere, just everywhere. It was so beautiful. And I won't never forget when I got over there, the guy that I was supposed to see that was the head of the operation that was going on over there, I was supposed to be kind of like overseer over him to check it out, was a man me and Roy used to work with. And his name is Mike. I ain't going to give his last name. But me and Roy worked with him, and uh, I love him. And uh, I was so excited to see him because I didn't think he would be there. Uh huh, boy, I was totally shocked, and but but I was so joyous in my heart to see him that he had made it in, hallelujah, and he was there. But I remember going over there. I, I didn't see great oceans and stuff like I seen these beautiful little streams everywhere, everywhere. They was everywhere all over the land, and there was gold in them and all kind of stuff. It's just beautiful. I remember that vision to today. It, it won't go away, you know. But the whole thing about it is I was really shocked because there he was. And I didn't think he'd be there. And so I'm excited. I'm praying for him right now that God's going to get him there. I pray for him that God will get him there. And uh, that'll happen. Amen. Look here. Let's go to two. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from uh, God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now, I don't know, y'all can get in Revelations and you can read. Man, you can see it's made out of jewels and diamonds and jaspers and the golds are streets of gold and all this, you know, and it's so magnificent and so beautiful we can't imagine it's 1,500 square, 1,500 high, 1,500 miles long. It's an awesome thing coming down from heaven. It's going to dwell and it's going to be the new Jerusalem. Well, I'm here to tell you, Everybody in the world is trying to destroy Jerusalem or wants to, to possess Jerusalem. That's the devil. And he's trying to get everybody because why? God said, that's my land. 
that's where I'm going to dwell for eternity. Now I want to tell you something. I, I don't, I don't mean this wrong, but I was watching the news uh, the other night, and I seen where the Pope went to Jerusalem, and I seen where the Pope. He's trying to be a good man, but I, I'm going to be honest with you. He's not reading God's word because he went over there and he tried to uh, make peace and he wants to give the Palestinians uh, uh, some of that land. That's not of God. He ain't reading God's word right. He needs to get in God's word and see what God's word said. God's said, word said Jerusalem, Israel is covenant land. Uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that's where that land come from. And it's always going to be that. And there ain't no man going to give God's land away because if they do, they're going to suffer the consequences. That's what I've seen. I pray that, uh, I pray the Pope will get back in the book and read it a little deeper and find the truth there. And I know he's a man of wisdom and knowledge, uh, but he's missed something on that one because I read it and study it and I see it. That's God's land. You don't give that land to nobody. You don't split Jerusalem up. Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, Amen. bottom line. And America better recognize that. Washington, D.C. better recognize that. They better get in God's word and get some real wisdom. See what's going on. Amen? But I seen that and I picked on that real quick. I said, man, that, that this bothers me that, that he, he ain't deep enough in that word to see that that's God's land and God's people is going to have that land. What gives him the right to go down there and try to make peace and give some of that land away so there'll be a peace? That's the devil. That's the devil. Trying to deceive people. Now, that's what I've seen real quick. Let's look a little bit further right here. And uh, Revelation 21, 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Ha, ha! Hallelujah. He's going to dwell with his creation. He's going to dwell with his people. You see what it is? His people, that means us, that's received him and believes in his son Jesus. That's how you get there. <clears throat> There's no other way to get there unless you do that. And uh, praise God, he's going to dwell with his people for eternity. For eternity, we will be with the Lord. For You know, that's something we all look forward to. We're going to be with our families and our, and our loved ones, you know, that's up there. Of course, now, some of our families are not going to make it. I hate to say it. Like Sharon said tonight, pray for our lost loved ones. We all got them. And I'm praying that some of them stiff neck uh, loved ones that we have in our family will get humble before the Lord like I did and some of my other people have and cry out to him and serve him. Amen? But woe unto those who don't. But there's nothing I can do but pray and ask God to have mercy and save them the way he did us. It's their choice. And God will not go against their will, you see. That's, what, that's it. That's it. Now look here. He's going to dwell with his people. And we're going to be with him. And he's going to be our God. He is our God, by the way. Amen. Let's look a little bit further right here. And God shall wipe away all tears. I really like this one right here. They, uh, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. Now, this is a powerful scripture right here, y'all. I don't know about y'all, but I look, uh, I hear stuff going on in South Carolina, going on in Greenville, going on in uh, Spartanburg, going on around the world. These tragic things happening all over the world. These tears, these sorrow, these pain. And I praise Almighty God one day. They's coming a day for the ones that serve our Heavenly Father. There'll be no tears. Them tear ducts going to be gone. There'll be no sorrow. Can you think about that? Can you imagine how sorrowful and grieving it is when you, lost, you lose a loved one? There'll be no more pain. Can you imagine some of the pain people uh, get into in their body sometimes? There won't be no pain. 
You know, a lot of times when I pray for people that's in pain, I pray, God, take that pain away right now, God, please, God, because it's agony. It's a, it's a curse. It's what it is. It's a curse, part of the curse upon this earth. Sickness is part of the curse upon this earth. What is the other big one, a curse upon this earth? Death. Death. God didn't mean us to die. If Adam and Eve in the dispensation of innocence uh, had not sinned, uh, we'd never die. Woo-hoo. Well, guess what, praise God? Our Lord Jesus died, but he rose again. He is the first of the begotten, and we're going to be like him. And we're going to live eternity with him. We're going to have a healthy body, and there'll be no pain, amen. There'll be no sorrow. There'll be no death, hallelujah. I'm excited about this. I can just sit here on this scripture the rest of the night right here. No death, neither sorrow, no crying, neither shall be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Won't be no crying. Think about it. Ooh, that's going to be, I'm looking for it, ain't you? I'm looking for it. That's one of my my hopes. Uh, He that has set upon the throne said, he that set upon the throne said, behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, write, for these words are true and faithful. Now, what we're talking about tonight is his precious word. They are true and they are faithful. That word of God that he's given us and he speaks through us through his word is it's done everything that it said over the thousands of years that it's been written. Now, it's still current today, by the way. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at here. Boy, I like this thing right here, Jeanette. <laughs> this ain't nice. Look at, let's look at... Uh, uh, and he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the waters of life freely. See, if you get thirsty, he'll give you that fountain of, wa- of water of life freely. Look here. And he that overcome it. Now, we got to do what? We got to do what? He that overcome it shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Now, we as children of God have got to do something. One thing, when you become a child of God, you got to obey his commandments. And that shows that you one of his, you know. And one of the other things, you got to be an overcomer. You can't obey his commandments and then go back out in the world out there. You got to overcome this stuff and you can do it with the power of Almighty God, our Lord Jesus Christ. He's, he'll help you. He'll help you. When you stumble, he'll help you get back up. Just like our little children, as we raised them, they fell down. Get back up. Well, you know what? You're going to be walking. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got it. You got it. Ah. <laughs> That's what that little one's going to be doing pretty soon. It's going to be walking. And they're going to be following. Everybody. Get it. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? <laughs> it's into what? Where's it at? <laughs> I know. I've been there. But that's the way God is with us. We as, we are his children. We're Christians and, and we're his children. And when we first get saved, you know, we like a little baby. We stumble down, fall, and all of a sudden we start walking. And all of a sudden we get deep in the word. We get solid and we can cry out to God when something comes up. And we become an overcomer. Amen. 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 Woo, I like it. I like it. I like it. Praise God. Look here. We become an old overcomer. Now, let's go a little bit further here. Let's go to Isaiah 2, 1 through 4. And it talks about uh, God's going to bring, when he comes back, he's going to bring universal peace and prosperity. How many like peace? I do. Y'all do. How many likes prosperity? Oh, I like that too, man. You got prosperity. Everything looks good, don't it? Everything's going along good. You ain't got no stress factor. All that stuff going on. The rent's going to be paid. Everything's happening there. You got food in the freezer. Everything's looking good. Prosperity. I'll tell you right now, when you come a Christian and sold out to the Lord, you'll see prosperity in your life. It just starts getting more and more. You'll start seeing it. And you keep following the Lord and you'll see it more and more. I'm telling you. And, and you know, you'll get more peace in your life even here now because, see, we're in the kingdom of God and we're not of this world kingdom. But I'm here to tell you tonight, the kingdom of this world, there's no peace. There's not going to be no peace. It's just like fussing and fighting and feuding. It's everywhere. Me and my wife was at uh, big, old, big, 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 Big Orange yesterday eating a little sandwich for lunch. And there was this girl that worked there, and, uh, you know, I ain't trying to be nosy or nothing, but I can't hear good, but my wife could hear. She was over there, and she was on the phone, and they was screaming and hollering and fussing and fighting and crying going on right there in the store, and she was working there. I'm telling you, it's everywhere. 
And, and, we, and we as Christians need to try to comfort some of those people that's in positions like that and, and try to help whatever. But I don't know about y'all. Well, I do know about y'all. We want peace, don't we? We want peace. And, we, and when we become saved and on fire for all, we get a peace that passes all understanding. It comes from the Lord. But I'm talking about a worldly peace. I'm talking about these countries that's killing each other. I mean, they, they're actually killing each other like a dog. They don't even have a respect for a dog, a, a human life. A human life is creation of God. It ain't a dog. Creation of God, and they're killing each other. What kind of world are we living in again? I see it. It's all over the news. No peace. It's everywhere. It's like a flood. It's coming everywhere. It's, it's around us. I'm here to tell you, it's everywhere. But God's a God is going to be peace on this earth when he comes and straightens it out this time, the second advent, when he comes. He's going to straighten it out. It's going to be totally straightened out. Look at here. It's going to be peace and prosperity. Isaiah 2, 1 through 4. Uh-oh, Ronnie's doing something. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. All nations are going to flow into it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up into the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob and he will teach us of his way. And we will walk in his paths for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Now see what's going to happen. The nations of the world is going to come and pray alms to the Lord once a year. If they don't, they don't get no rain. <clears throat> well, they're going to come and they're going to see the Lord and, and the Lord's going to tell them how they need to live. This is what you need to do. If you want peace and prosperity, this is what you need to do. And so uh, he's going to show us how to live our lives in peace and prosperity. Isn't that going to be exciting? Guess what? They're going to take all the weapons and everything and turn them into plows and tilt the land. It's going to be exciting, y'all. Look here. Let's go a little bit further right here. He will teach us of his ways. I wrote a song. Teach me your way, Lord. I want to know. I want to know, Lord. Show me your ways. Show me what you want me to do. Teach me, Lord. I want to know. Look right here. And, it sh and he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into what? Plowshares. And their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Boy, is that not, not going to be a, a great time in our life in eternity? There'll be war no more. See, that's another curse on the land war it's going to be no more they're going to get rid of all the weapons and everything and they're going to make pruning hooks and and uh, and they're going to make plowshares and stuff to tilt the land that's going to be exciting y'all because guess what the land is going to be very fruitful and i just don't believe man's going to have to get all that fruit by the sweat of his brow i think it's going to be a piece of cake <laughs> we're going to have be prosperous and it's going to be good the way who meant it to be, God. The way God meant it to be. We're going to be excited and be in that. Amen. Now let's look right here. Uh, well, we'll look at Michael too. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountains of the house of the Lord shall be established. In the top of the mountains it shall be exalted above the hills. And the people shall flow unto it. And many nations shall come and say, come and let us uh, go up uh, now, we just read in Isaiah, now we in Micah, <clears throat> the Micah the prophet's talking. To the house of God of Jacob, he shall teach us of his ways, and we will walk in the paths, for the law shall go forth in Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. From where? Jerusalem. Uh-huh. I like that. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall be... Their swords into plows. I just want it plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall be any, uh, any 
they learn war anymore. I just wanted to look at that. We read in Isaiah the same thing. Now here's Micah the same thing. See, God speaks to us, and he's confirming his word. But they shall set every man under his vine and under his own fig tree, and none shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken it. For all the people will walk, everyone in the name of his God, and will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. And in that day, the Lord, I will assemble her that hateth, <coughs> that hateth, and I will gather her that is driven out, and that that I have afflicted, halteth. And I will make her that halteth a renament, and her that was cast far off a strong nation, and the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth ever forever. Praise God. Now I want to look at Revelations eleven fifteen. Guess what? Our God is going to possess the earth. Okay? This is a good scripture right here. You need to, you need to underline this. We done been over this scripture two or three times, but let's do it again. <coughs> like Nathan, now you go over it two or three times, you'll remember it. <laughs> Look at here. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of our Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Look at that. Look at that, y'all. <coughs> it says right here, the kingdoms of this world, which is the devil and his little kingdom and everything down here, the kingdom of, of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. That finalizes it right there. It's a done deal right there. <laughs> Praise God, amen. We, uh, he's going to possess uh, his creation. Praise God. Now, let's go on a little bit further. Oh, we're doing okay. We're going to look at uh, Malachi 1.11. It talks about evangelizing the world in pure religion. See, when God comes back and sets up uh, his kingdom here materialistically, <coughs> his kingdom's already here, but materialistically, listen, <coughs> excuse me. The pure language is going to be what? God. Love the Lord thy God with your holy heart because he's the one going to be ruling and reigning and we're going to love him. It's going to be pure religion right there. Look at here. For from the rising of the sun even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great. There it is. Among the Gentiles. His name is great. We, we sang about it tonight. And every place uh, incense shall be Increase shall be offered unto my name, and a pure offering for my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. Pure religion upon this earth like never before. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> Y'all have to help me sometimes. Sometimes I look at a word that goes totally blank. Is that thee? <laughs> Praise God. Now let's go a little bit further. He's going to restore all. We're going to look at that in uh, Acts 3.19. Look right here. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come and the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ which before was preached unto you whom the heavens must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. You see, he's told us by his prophets all these things is going to happen and what's coming. Amen? <coughs> Let's look right here and look. Uh, this is a part I like too. God's going to bind Satan and his angels. Oh, oh, oh I like that. Look here. And the devil that deceiveth them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are and shall be tormented day and night for a little while. Huh? Forever and ever. Now, 
We can get into that word torment and we can get into comfort. I like those two words, but I like comfort best, don't you? <clears throat> it said that they're going to be tormented day and night, 24 hours a day as we know it. They're going to be tormented. And, you know, it ain't just for a little while you've done bad and we're going to let you out in 25, 30 years. No, it's forever and ever, y'all. You see how serious this is for the people in the world out there that does not know Christ? If they died today, they would go to hell and they would be in the, tormented forever and ever for eternity. You see how serious this is? Look how God has blessed us by where we're at today. But it's what we got to do. We got to endure to the end, hadn't we? We got to stay strong with the Lord. Look here. But I like that right there because uh, Satan's going to be bound. His angels, by the way, all these little demons will be with him that followed him. You know, they made a poor choice, didn't they? They made a bad decision, didn't they? So they're going to be with him. They're going to be tormented day and night for eternity. And all the ones, uh, 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 the, the peoples of the world that decided to follow Satan and to live for him and do it their way, they're going to be tormented forever and ever in this place called hell. You see all those rebellious people where they're going to wind up. Terrible, terrible things. Look here. Let's see what else we got here. Well, we'll read this one too. And it shall come to pass in Isaiah 24, 21 through 24. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the hosts of high ones that are on high <clears throat> and the kings of the earth upon the earth and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in a pit and shall be shut up in the prison and after many days shall they be visited. Then the moon shall be conformed and the sun ashamed when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his ancients gloriously. You see, God, uh, we ain't going to need the sun and the moon and some of that stuff that God's created, and I love it, don't you? But God's going, his glory's going to shine so greatly that it's going to embarrass the sun. <laughs> That's the S-U-N, not the S-O-N. Praise God. Let's go a little bit further. They're going, and God's going to give man one more probation uh, trial in Revelation 21 through 10. Oh, let me read this right here before we get to there. For, for behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their inequity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover uh, her slain. Go a little bit further right here. Revelations 21 through 10. And I saw an angel uh, down from heaven having the key of the bottom of his pit and a great chain in his hand. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to go through this. This is where uh, God comes back the second advent and uh, during the millennium reign, one angel takes Satan and, with a chain, got him, takes him down to the pit and he's going to stay down there to the end of the thousand-year millennium reign. And at the end of the thousand-year millennium reign, he will be loosed for just a season. And when he does that, there's some people upon this earth during that millennium reign that's going to rebel against God and don't want to obey his rules and do what's right. That's that last probation uh, period that I was talking about. Man has one more change, those that's rebellious, to get it right with the Lord but a lot of them don't. <clears throat> and the devil will be led out of that fiery pit and he will gather them all up and they'll come against the Lord again, Jesus over there in Jerusalem and all of us saints and God himself will cause fire to come out of heaven and destroy all, every one of them and they'll put in a fiery pit for eternity and then God himself, the earth will be prepared and ready for God himself to come out of the third heaven to come down and dwell among men because rebellion is going to be put down, all of it, finally and eternally. And God will come down, and what he do? There's going to be another resurrection. That's going to be the great white throne resurrection. That's when God will call those that's in hell and dead up from hell, and he will judge them. They're not in the books. And then the second death for them, they will be thrown back into hell for eternity. 
That's called what? The great white throne judgment. But see, we're talking about the second advent. Now, the first resurrection, what happened there? I mean, the first, the rapture, what happened there? Those dead in Christ were resurrected out and went to be in heaven with the Lord. And those who are alive went to be with the Lord for seven years that Daniel the prophet talked about. And the great tribulation here upon the earth, the second advent is right after the great tribulation and when Christ comes down with his saints, us, and the millennium reign takes, uh, goes on. And then at that millennium reign, Satan will be let out for a season and uh, he'll get the rebellious people that's, that last probation period for the forum and they decided we're going to follow the devil and be destroyed and uh, God will destroy them and just one fire come out of heaven destroy them and then God himself will come from the third heaven and dwell upon this earth for eternity with his creation and then he will, the second resurrection will be the dead in hell will be raised up and they will come before God at the white throne judgment to be judged and cast back into hell for eternity. That's what happens. There's some heavy stuff going on, still going on. It ain't over yet, but we're getting close. I, I still believe we're that generation. So I'm going to try to, uh, I ain't going to I ain't gonna go to the Arm Armageddon thing. He laid hold on the old dragon, the serpent, the devil, we know that. He cast him in the bottomless pit. And uh, and the beast and all them was cast in there. Look here. But the rest of the dead lived not again until what? The thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. And blessed and holy is he that hath part in that. What is that? The rapture. We're gone. That's the first resurrection. Okay. And uh, death uh, hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, when we're with Christ, we're going to be priests and kings. You know that? Under him, it's, it's going to be Christ ruling and reigning in Jerusalem. It's going to be King David ruling under him. This is the authority. It's going to be the 12 disciples ruling under King David. And then it's going to be who? The saints, that's us, ruling under the 12 tribes. The world, by the way. You see the way that works? Now let's go a little bit further. <laughs> and when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Verse 8, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. That's a lot, isn't it? And they went up to the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, that's Jerusalem, and fire came down from God out of heaven and what? Devoured them. All right, let's look a little bit further right here. 10, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are and shall be tor tormented day and night forever and ever. Now, the Antichrist, the false prophets, all of them, they're going to be there. You see it? Awesome. Now, let's go a little bit further right here. We ain't going to talk about the battle of Armageddon. We're going to look at... Uh, we're going to go a little bit further. I like this thing now. Now, we're going to go to First Peter. I'm going to skip over some of this because I covered it Sunday. He, that's what the Lord wanted me to cover. I want to, I want to read Second Peter 3, 9 through 14. I want to tell you what's going on right here. What we're talking about tonight is what? God's promise to his saints. Amen? This is God's promise to his saints. What is fixing to take place, we are a part of it. Let's look right. He gave me this right as I was studying the other night. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to up usward, 
not willing that anyone should perish, but all should come to repentance. Now, God's desire that every person on the earth be saved. He wants that. But he gave man and woman a free choice. It's our will to go to heaven or go to hell. It's your choice. Look here. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Uh, in which the heavens shall pass away and a great noise and the elements shall melt uh, fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, that manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness. You see, in all these things are going to take place, what do we need to be? We need to be in holiness, don't we? We need to be in good conversations and doing the right thing that God has showed us what to do. Amen? Look at here. And looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to his what? Promise. He promised us a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness will be there. We'll be there. Amen. Wherein, who is righteousness? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. They're they the one who created us and made us righteous before them because of the Son Jesus. Amen. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. So we as Christians tonight need to be what? We need to be diligent, don't we? We need to stay close to God. We need to stay in the Word because He come when you think not. He's coming back and He's going to do everything that we talked about tonight. It's going to happen and praise God if we endure to the end, guess what? We're going to be a part of it. We're going to be a part of it. I'm excited about it. Now I'll give you a little, little bit of what God wants uh, Sunday and uh, this might be the last of it, Sunday. But we're going to talk about a theocratic government that is a divine inspired officials will be ruling this earth. Now, who is that? That's God Almighty. That's who that is. We're going to talk about that some Sunday. And we're going to talk about um, everyone's going to be healed there ain't going to be no sickness. We're going to talk about that Sunday a little bit, if the Lord, unless the Lord changes it. But this is a, the last part of this, I think, that God wants on this. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, God's preparing the earth for eternal habitation of God. He's going to purge all rebellion to get back to his original program that he wants. Amen? I don't know about y'all, but that's exciting to me. I, I'm, I'm excited about what God's going to do. Amen? And uh, I, I've really been uh, excited about being in this uh, this revelation, some of this revelation that he wanted. <clears throat> he won't let me out of this second advent. He kept holding me there to continue on. So the last part of it looks like it's going to be Sunday morning. So I'll be praying that God will move on me and uh, uh, deliver exactly what he wants Sunday morning on the rest of it. Amen? It's a lot. It could go on and on and on, but I think uh, uh, he'll have me in what we got going on maybe Sunday. I'm excited about Sunday. I just got to get in there and dig and dig and study and look at it though. Amen. And how many is enjoying this? Amen. Amen. I, I am. I just love it. And uh, I, I want to talk to people on the internet right now. Thank you so much for being with us uh, uh, this this evening. We pray that God's going to touch you and we pray that uh, by, by some of these things that God's showing us in his word that uh, it'll get a hold of you and you'll want to be a part of it if you're not a part of it. Uh, and, and, and you want to realize that Jesus loves you so much he died for you on the cross and he wants to save you. He wants to come in your heart and you can be a part of what we're talking about tonight in a positive way. You can, uh, that peace and prosperity that's going to be for eternity with our Lord, <clears throat> dwelling with him for eternity. If you don't know Jesus, I ask tonight, if you'll just ask him to come in your heart and just cry out to him, say, Lord, please forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for rebelling against you because you know in yourself, in your heart, that you've not been living, if you don't know Jesus, that you've not been living the right manner that he wants you to. And he'll help you live that way. He'll help you live right 
if you'll ask him because he loves you so much. I pray that you'll ask him to come into your heart and just ask him, say, Lord, I believe your son died on the cross and was buried, and the third day he rose again, just like the scriptures say, and people have seen him uh, that after that resurrection, <clears throat> and ask him to come in your heart. And if you'll do that, he said, thou shalt be saved. You'll be saved from that tribulation, from the times of torment, the devil and all of his people is going to be in. It's going to be a terrible thing, and it's going to be forever and ever. Or you can forever and ever live with the God Almighty, uh, the creator of heaven and earth, and dwell with him and his son and the sweet Holy Ghost for eternity. Be with him. It's your decision. I pray you'll make the right one. And if you made the right one and asked God, uh, to, uh, ask Jesus to come in your heart, let us know. Just drop us a little line and say, listen, I ask Jesus to come in my heart because we want to rejoice with you because you'll be in his kingdom then with us. Amen. God bless you. Amen.